In this new series, we're going to be bringing you conversations with business owners doing amazing things. For our very first conversation, we're going to be speaking with Vale Amwa Bing, the CEO of a local skincare brand, Skin Gourmet. This is a company that has grown into a global brand over the past seven years, and we're going to be talking through her journey and what it is that she did to grow her business to this level. If you're interested in these conversations, we'll be bringing them to you every other Wednesday. So if you haven't already turned on your notifications, you definitely want to do this and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on this content. But because we're still loyal to real estate, we can check out some of the interesting pieces over here. This is a light fixture made out of a broom apparently so it was painted and then this is a very interesting bicycle it's, it's so unique and so different it's really beautiful yeah and these are repurposed furniture turned into chairs and also their wallpaper here is really unique very different very interesting you see that they've taken the labels from their bottles these are apparently the rejected labels and used it as wallpaper all very interesting it's a very unique and beautiful space Hi, Violet. Hi. So nice to have you here today. Thank Can you. you kindly tell us a little bit about Skin Gourmet, okay. what you do here, your brand? Just yeah. tell us a bit okay, about so that. Okay, so Skin Gourmet, we make raw handmade skincare mm -hmm. and it's sourced from the wild of Ghana and it's so pure. You can okay. literally eat it. Eat it. Okay. Um, the idea is that we make things handmade, which is very important for us because mm -hmm. it creates jobs. Okay. Um, we choose to make sure that we focus on Ghana because mm -hmm. it's really interesting when you're from a very small country mm -hmm. like Ghana, we don't realize how unique our ingredients are. But our focus is more on export, so we make sure right. that our products are also really unique. Yeah. Right, right. So how long have you been doing this for? The first time I saw your product was in 2019 at an event. Really? It was in one of the gift bags, and that's the first time I saw anything from you. Okay. And I went on to start following your brand, and I fell in love with your branding, your Thank marketing. You. <laughs> Everything is so exquisite. Can you tell us when you actually started this journey? Okay, so I started in 2014. Wow, sounds like so far. <laughs> So long ago, right? I started in 2014. Okay. I was actually working at my dad's um, bank at the time. Okay. And um, I decided, you know, I was having this issue with my lip. It kept cracking in the middle every single person, Hamatan and stuff. So my friend's like, you know, this one time it wasn't healing. Like, there's nothing I could do that to get this thing to go. So my friend's like, Charlie, just use shea butter. And I'm mm -hmm. like, bro, listen, like, I just came back from the US. What are you talking about? <laughs> shea butter bomb. And anyway, I used the shea butter three days. And three it went days, away. No so I said to myself, what are we putting in these creams, right? Okay. So I started comparing my creams to shea butter. Shea butter is one ingredient. Mm -hmm. The cream had about over 10 ingredients. Half of them, I don't know what it is. And I realized that most of those ingredients are to make me buy it. So preservatives, right. um, texturizing, right. um, stabilizers, all that stuff. So I said to myself, you know what? With no research, mm -hmm. with no research, I said, I'm going to make the best body butter the world has ever seen. Hey, I didn't do, I didn't go into, I didn't, I didn't, my first one was where, so I took my, all my savings, 100 and 45 savings, don't laugh. 100. <laughs> it was just, so all her savings, all like, was such a big, such a big amount. <laughs> yeah, and I went, so I took it out of the bank, it's about mm -hmm. $45 at the time. Mm -hmm. And I went to Makala, and I bought, you know, those really ugly containers, plastic with a yellow top. That's not like a put messy cream in those. Yes, yes, girl. <laughs> and I created my logo on PowerPoint. You know, I printed, out, <laughs> no, I printed out my label for the, uh, the home computer. Mm -hmm. I cut it with scissors. Mm -hmm. I got my glue stick, put it on there, stuck it on the container, put my formulations in. Then I said, My God, this the is world it. is in trouble. So I went to church and I said to, I said to God, God, mm -hmm. have you seen the three containers in my wardrobe? Please give me a company. And I was thinking in my back of my head, um, <laughs> it went from one, one layer in my wardrobe mm -hmm. to two layers in my wardrobe mm -hmm. to the full wardrobe to wow. that whole wardrobe section. To getting into my brother's wardrobe. Oh wow! So they kicked me out to the pool house, and then now in my house, I have one room, and Skin Gourmet has the whole house. Wow! So it's been it's been really interesting. Yeah, that's been a good. journey. Yeah, that's been interesting. I saw an interview of yours from 2017 where you were talking about how you saw yourself exporting yeah. and growing your brand <laughs> internationally, and I was so impressed because that's like pure manifestation. Yeah. You knew exactly what you want, yeah. and then you worked towards that. So that's interesting. I just want to find out though. What has it been like building a business for you in Ghana okay. because of our systems and everything like that? Yeah. What's that process been like for you? To tell you the truth, I think I love it here. It, mm -hmm. It's difficult. It is. Mm -hmm. There's so many issues and so many challenges. But mm -hmm. honestly, I think that's how we are growing. You know, I find that like innovation or constraint is the birth of innovation. Right. So like I said, 145 cities, no investors, no loans. But you know, when you have to struggle and everything is against you, mm -hmm. it's like... You, and you find a way to surmount each and every single one. Yep. It makes it even more exciting. It breaks you half the time. 
it, but you get up every single time, yep. and it's like you love even what you're doing. What you're doing even more, even more. Exactly. and it makes you feel more like not like you deserve it, but that you can dream, mm -hmm. and no matter how hard it is, it can actually come true. So, I mean, I could have started this business in America or wherever, but I like that I started here. Mm -hmm. I like all the people I've met, even the people who have created difficulties for me. <laughs> they don't know how they've been such a blessing to me. So. All right. Starting a business in Ghana is awesome. Uh -huh. I think we just have to sometimes change our mindset mm. and our perception mm -hmm. and just see every challenge as, I'm going to win. And like, there's no way I'm not going to win. Yeah. 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 So how has that mindset been in terms of the reception of your product? You're doing something really different. Mm. You're making skincare products that we can eat. Yeah. But we all know typically what we know is these... I don't want to mention any <laughs> brands, but more popular brands where we know that you definitely can't put this in your yeah. mouth. But you're putting this on your skin. It has chemicals. It yeah. has all of that. And there's this more organic movement now. We're more concerned about what's in a product. Yeah. But what was it like for you? What did, how did people receive you creating something that you were saying we can cook with this yeah. and then we can put it on our bodies as well? So you see, the thing I realized was, remember I said to you, I put on my lip, mm -hmm. right? So, and I looked at the ingredients. Right. Even though it's on my lip, mm -hmm. right? If you put something on your skin, it's absorbed in your body. Exactly. So if you're not going to eat it, why would you put it on your skin mm -hmm. when it ends up in the same place? So at first, that whole concept was very difficult for people to understand because you have to remember that the major players of skin mm -hmm. skincare in the world, mm -hmm. this is what they've been doing for forever. Exactly. So they've convinced the consumer that it's normal. But really ask yourself, if you look at Ghanaian skincare, mm -hmm. what your grandmother used, what your grandmother used, they used only Natural. ingredients and products mm -hmm. that were that were also eating. Yeah. So this is actually how we do with skincare. But for some reason, we are like forgotten. And instead for us to push back at the world to say, no, we ain't accepting that. This we're is ours and up. we want you to have yeah. it. So I decided it was hard in the beginning, but I think now people are getting it. It's mm. been seven good years. And I think now, now people are understanding, okay, this is why I should be able to eat my skincare. Yeah. Because my body is going to absorb it and exactly. I have to take care of myself. And I think it's also the rise of the new Ghanaians, right? right? Because Ghanaians are not the Ghanaians that used to be like, we've gone out, our education is much mm -hmm. better, we've become more sophisticated, we love ourselves more, we love our culture more. So I feel like Ghana, out of the rest of the world, has actually helped us, pushed us more. Mm. Because you'd be surprised that um, most people think that Ghanaians would be the ones to get in your way because what a mindset. But actually, it's the Ghanaians who have really been pushing, pushing the you. brand wow. outside, inside. And so it's been, it's been quite a journey, but wow. it's been great, yes. So let's talk about transitioning from a traditional career like like banking into something so different, into okay. skincare. Let's okay. talk about that. What's that experience like for you? Well, I mean, it's been the best thing of my life. Like, <laughs> let me explain. Like, I'm a type of person, I don't like, I don't want to fit in the box, right? right? Like, it's been really brief for me because I feel like I've been able to actually express myself mm -hmm. and I'm not the banker type. Okay. I'm not really into. I, I did finance accounting, but it's, mm -hmm. you know you do that to eat, just so you know. Say you know you got something coming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I'm more of a creative, and I've always been. So okay. the room to create what you want, how you want, how you see it, and the challenges of bringing that to life, mm -hmm. it's been amazing. Yeah. I feel like I'm actually this is what I'm called to. So I'm pretty excited about it. That's Very beautiful. Happy. What's your background like? My background? Okay, so wait, how far is my background? Like, how back let's go, let's go as, as far back as we can go. Okay, all right, I was born. <laughs> <laughs> Not that far back. Okay, right. I have an undergraduate. Mm -hmm. and I got that in the US mm -hmm. uh, for marketing and business administration. Okay. And then I did my master's as well because, you know, when I initially went to school in the US, I was going to do poetry. And my dad was like, oh, we're great. Awesome. <laughs> And then I called him one day and I was like, Dad, so I just finished my accounting professor and he says, I'm very good at accounting, so I should accounting. He said, oh, thank you, Jesus. He said, oh, I thought my child was going to do a poetry. I was just like, so I changed it to accounting. And then for my master's, I focus more on that. Which okay. Is finance, mm -hmm. accounting, supply chain, logistics. Right. Because I found it interesting because it's not yet in practice and mm -hmm. there's still room for creativity there. Okay. So then when I came back to Ghana, yeah, I did the banking stuff. I went to work at African Development Bank as an intern, which is great as well. And then when I left, even though you know you, you, banking is not your thing, everything you learn actually really applies. Right. How you deal with your bankers, how you, how your bankers think, you have mm -hmm. to know how your numbers work, your costs. Okay. So even though it's a creative business, which I love, there's yeah. stuff that gets down to the nitty gritty where you have to be very technical. Right. So that background did help as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So at some point in your career, you were balancing banking with entrepreneurship. Yeah. What was that like for you? It was tough. It was right. tough because I couldn't give this my all. 
And so, like I always say, they fired me in 2007. What was 2000? They fired me in 2008. Anyway, they fired me. <laughs> but I want to tell those people, thank you. Like, for honestly, that opportunity, like, yeah. It was the best thing to get fired because what I realized was my business was, you know, you're, it's, it's going okay, but you don't realize how slow the growth is. Right. But when I got fired from that job, my company grew by over 141%. Whoa. 141%. So it was amazing. But yeah. again, it's good that I started at work because a lot of people, they start a business and they want a lot of money. Mm-hmm. I can start with 145 because when I first started, I didn't have any clients, of course. So mm-hmm. I would take my salary from the bank right? and then I'll buy my own products mm-hmm. and I'll give it away. Nice. In, in a way to kind of like yeah. penetrate the market and Push then it came back slowly mm. but then it gets to a point where your business is like you know what I don't need that, that, that those peanuts and money anymore I need you to be here as a business right so once I, I left the job I remember I was really sad for like one week then I got up like a power ranger and I was like <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do this and I did it <laughs> so there's still more room for you to go where, exactly. where do you see this going in five years in five years I have big plans to actually have Come see when we set up globally. Like, mm-hmm. so it's not just in Ghana, but we have hubs outside, right, so right. that it makes the shipping and things easier for our clients. Right. I'm hoping to get Skin Gourmet in such a way that we have even franchised it so that okay. other people can also take part in it. Mm. Um, and I think the main thing is in five years' time, I would like that we spread the message enough where people know that if I can't eat it, I'm not gonna wear right. it. So I think, again, it's the main thing is focusing globally. Like, right. Ghana is too small, it is too small. I'm trying to serve billions now, right? right. Billions of people. <laughs> 23 million, more, I think. But even that's even smaller. Yeah. With 20 million, 21 million. It's, I mean, let's talk billions. You know, that's what I'm looking for. Make billions. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, so let's talk through going from 145 Ghana cities to building a business that can serve billions and generate yeah. that kind of income. Yeah. What would you say the biggest yeah. learning curves have been for you? I think that the main learning curve is, is overcoming myself. Right. Right? Because you have the vision. Mm-hmm. But, I just say, you don't realize how you get in your way, right? right? So you think you can't do it, then you can't do it. If you see this issue or this challenge as a problem, then mm-hmm. that's what it is. If you see this obstacle as anything other than an opportunity, that's on you. So I realized that the hardest thing for most of us is getting over ourselves. It's not being limited by finance. It's not being limited by ideas. Mm-hmm. It's you. It's how you're looking at it, where your perspective is. And how so a lot of times when I feel like I can't do it, I'm having difficulty, I'm like, you know, I will stop, we're not doing this. Okay, yeah. we're not we're not doing this. It's been seven years. <laughs> Get over it and find the opportunity in the situation. Yeah. Whatever you do, find it, make it, overcome it, and then know that there's a bigger challenge coming. A much bigger one. Mm-hmm. So you just gotta get yourself ready to overcome that one too. There are lots of people trying to grow businesses. There are yeah. lots of people doing things and venturing into entrepreneurship. So what are some of the things that have helped you grow your business that you think would apply to everybody, that would help us all in growing our businesses? I think the main thing, um, what I'm, the success that I'm finding is, mm-hmm. whatever you do, make sure that it's your own. Okay. You know, it, it's very tempting to say, oh, this person is doing this, so let me do the same mm-hmm. thing. You will make it if yeah. it's not your own, if it's not in your heart, if you don't have the passion for it. Mm-hmm. So. If you like money, you like money. That's cool. You okay. know, like that means you need to do something that may helps you to generate the cash, and that's what keeps you going. If you do it for people, make sure you do it for the people. I think with everything, don't look at a means to an end that you're not interested in. Right. So somebody might say, okay, hey, they're selling tomatoes on the street. This person make money. So but you don't even like tomatoes. You don't exactly. even eat tomatoes. You know, like. <laughs> but in everything that we do, I feel like as an entrepreneur, have a niche. Like, have something that makes you unique and it's yours. You came up with it. You found a way around it, and that's how you make it. Because I realized that in every step of the way, it's your uniqueness yeah. that lets people choose you. But if what you're doing is saturating what someone else has, they will beat you at your own game. Yeah. Because the game isn't really yours. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about becoming the best in your in your sector, the best in what you do. You're in skincare. You're one of the leading skincare providers oh, thank in you. Ghana. <laughs> Honestly, you have on point branding. Your Instagram page is amazing. I love the way you incorporate your staff into everything you do. It looks like a very lively community that you created (laughs) okay so tell us about growing to become one of the best in your in your field i think it's it's about you know those sleepless nights you have Mm -hmm. where all you do is think about every day you sit down and reflect what did i do wrong Mm -hmm. what did i do well what can i improve on what did the customer tell me what feed and you know the thing is when you take your crafts personally if someone has said something negative about it you can get upset or you can decide, wait, there must be something in there for me to either improve or mm-hmm. not improve. So I think it's constant reflection, you know, okay. and also beating yourself up. Let me explain what I mean by that. You can either blame people for your problems or you blame yourself. 
Right. So if something is wrong, it's me. It's only me, and I'm the only one who can change it. And I think that helps you to incrementally keep changing, keep twisting, keep moving, keep... So, again, it's beating yourself up. Sounds terrible, but it's true. Sounds terrible. It, it, yeah. like, you have to, like, That's you can't truth. be like, yeah. Yeah. and this person didn't like my packaging. It's because I'm not in package. Well, it wasn't Amma, it was you, right? <laughs> and then, of course, um, reflect, 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 reflect. This product is leaking. Why is it leaking? Let me try and fix it. This person said this. Just reflect, 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 reflect. Tweet, right. tweet, tweet, tweet. Train changing. And constant improvement. You right. never... I remember those of what, time back where I thought, oh, you know, my company's running smoothly now. I can no, Mm-mm. no, never that. <laughs> In fact, it had completely like it. It took, it it was asking for a new level, right? right? So now, first you develop the products. That's one thing. Now you need to develop the systems, mm-hmm. which is a whole new challenge. Right. So I think it's those things: always tweaking, always changing, always looking for ways to improve. Yeah. yeah. But the higher you go, the bigger your problems get. Oh yeah. The ha- yeah. Bigger your challenges oh, get. So yeah. how do you how do you deal with that? Oh, like it's like um. It's like walking like a kid, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're a kid, your biggest issue right now is you can't walk. Right. Right? Is that a big problem? No. You think it is. Right? Then you can walk. Wait, I can't run. Right. Right? Then you can run. Wait, I can't fly. Right? It, th- th- that's how it, it is. It never stops. It never stops. Yeah. It's just there's always an opportunity to grow, to get mm-hmm. better, to do more. So right. it's just, it will get harder, but somebody, wait. Actually, somebody said Esther Kobla, I think mm-hmm. from um, Stratcom Africa. Okay. Yeah. She said to me, like, be an entrepreneur. It's only going to get harder, but you be proud of yourself. <laughs> and I think that as it gets harder, you get tougher. Yes, like, exactly. As it gets it harder, you get tougher. And yeah. I mean, it's, every time you have a challenge, it's an opportunity. Yeah. It's not to stop you. It's to make you greater. That is it. That's amazing. So how do you grow yourself as a business owner? Grow how yourself. do you grow yourself? Do you take courses, training? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, it's a constant development thing that you have going on. Constant, like we're constantly training, like we train even the staff. Mm. We're constantly. Um, I'm actually enrolled right now at Stanford Seed. Okay. Um, applying for programs, mm. you know, and also asking for mentorship and asking for help. Right. That's the thing. You know, a lot of times you get someone you think, oh, I'm too big now to ask for help. No. Right. You always need help. Right. Like we always need help. Mm-hmm. What is the biggest thing you think you've learned from this journey? that I need to get over myself. Yeah, I think that's okay. the biggest one. I need to get over myself and that, it's, it's, see, life is not as simple as you see it. It's right. like you need to find something that really makes you happy, mm-hmm. that you're willing to die for. Okay. Which is a very uh, extreme way of putting it, but that's the only way that this business can break you. Because it'll break you. It will yeah. break you several so times. It will keep breaking mm-hmm. you. But if you love it and you want it, it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a saying that you never start living until you find something that you're ready to die exactly. for. Exactly. It's such and a beautiful way to put it's it. It's exactly yeah. that, you know. So if you don't, if you're not, just said, when you're starting a business, it's not a means to an end. Like, sit down and really ponder, like, what do you do so? There's something unique about all of us that we don't even know. Right. Like, everyone here has something that nobody else has. Exactly. You need to sometimes sit down, tap into yourself, understand who you are, right. and understand what it is about you that you are ready to give to the world. So you don't come to the world to take you come to give and whatever you're giving is already inside you. Yeah. Yeah. That's really amazing. Let's talk about how you promote yourself. You're very good with social media. So what do you have to say to upcoming business owners on how to utilize the power of social media? Ooh, that one, I mean, okay, so I'll be, I'll be honest about Instagram. Mm-hmm. When I first used it, I didn't know what was going on. Right. Like, until I went for my first training in South Africa and then I realized that this stuff is really important. Mm-hmm. So I'll tell you, I just pray to God. I'm like, God, can you help me on Instagram? That yeah. is it. And then, he built it up this much. Like, wow. I honestly have no, it's not, I asked for help and I got help. That's how I've been able to do it. Also, I hired a branding team, okay. which I think is really important. And a lot of times people don't understand that with branding, you have to pay quite a lot of money for it. But mm-hmm. because it's not like a raw material or a salary, right. we tend to think, oh, I can just do the bare minimum. No, the presence of your brand is extremely important. And a lot of times you find that you are spending a lot of money there, mm-hmm. but that's also what's giving your company exactly. the visibility. So, and you see, you think you can brand on your own. Yes, you can. But what you need a team for is to communicate, help right. you communicate that to right. other people. And also take things like your analytics, okay? We, we don't understand how important data is. How people are reacting to it. What needs to be changed? To tweak. So a branding team also helps. Prayer helps, but you also need a branding team right. for sure. Right. Because I I feel like your brand speaks so much about you. It was your brand that actually got me attracted to you. Because oh, wow. I saw the product and then I went onto your website and I realized ah, 
this is done much better than a lot of things that I have seen. So then that pushed me to go and check out your Instagram. Thank and I was you. like, okay, <laughs> this is much better than a lot that I have seen. Yes. And then automatically you, you get a fan. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like it's really important that yeah. that journey, yeah. but we yeah. tend to overlook it. Exactly. It, it takes a lot of investment and a lot of time. <laughs> so what would you do differently over these past seven years if you were starting all over? What would you do differently? Um, I don't think I would do anything differently. Right. I, no. I, I, no. There's nothing I can think of that I could have, I mean, I, I'm glad I made my mistakes. Right. I, I'm happy for my mistakes because I learned. Yeah. So, I don't really want to do anything differently because I think the mistakes also were awesome. Mm -hmm. The winnings were also awesome. Yeah. The, the hard times. It was hard, yes, you cried many times, but <laughs> but it was all worth it, and right. I learned a lot. So I wouldn't do anything differently. Maybe I'll listen to my mom more. I should have listened to my mom and my dad more. Yeah, that's about it. Right. Okay. So, in which area of your life have you grown the most since you became a business owner? I think my self development. Right. I, I you know, you know, when you're younger, you're a bit insecure. Yeah. But I'm at the point where those things don't matter, right? Yeah. It's, it's about. I have to make sure I'm stable as a person, that when things affect me, I understand that I'm giving myself a beating, but it's not because I'm wrong, I'm a bad person, Exactly. it's just because I want to improve. So I've been able to take myself almost out of myself, you exactly. know, in the sense that I don't really care what people think about me, of yeah. course I reflect on it, mm -hmm. right? But I'm not going to judge myself or put myself down when I know how hard I'm working and how difficult it's been and how I have been through hell and back, yeah. and yet I'm still here. So it's, yeah, I've, I've taken myself sort of more out of myself and now I'm trying to see it from a bigger picture yeah. how I affect everything how everything is connected and you realize that half the time you're actually the smallest factor in it exactly mm -hmm. I feel like that's something that entrepreneurship gives you it yes. gives you a lot of self-awareness because exactly. you have that's the word self-awareness so so much because exactly. you have a lot of time for introspection exactly. and growth exactly. and then how you deal with people there's always so much room for growth exactly. and then reflection exactly so I think that's the exactly point. that's the point yeah. you got it it's an amazing journey it's yeah, an amazing it journey and for people trying to grow their businesses can you tell us three things that you would tell them to help make their journey easier mm -hmm. i'll say um number one you need to get help okay you need a mentor you need a program you need you need something someone you don't have all the answers mm -hmm. um i'll say number three be more adventurous too like take a little bit more risks don't yeah. be so risk averse that you're stuck free. in a box yeah so, i mean when i first started i remember my first pay of 800 that's when i had my bank account for white one day 20 hours completely white i survived so just under <laughs> just understand that take risks, calculated risks right. to see if it will work, and take a risk also on yourself. Right. And I think maybe third, I would say be creative. You know, mm -hmm. like take risks in your actions, but take risks in your mind and how you think, and push the envelope. Right. Like come up with some things that people are like, this is stupid, and right. just test it. If it was stupid, okay, you blend, keep it moving, but keep the ideas coming. Like. Keep adding on, keep changing, keep pushing the boundaries, and on top of that, be yourself. If be you yourself. like it, it's do it. It's important to be yourself, be yourself, as be authentic, genuinely self. Exactly. Right. Exactly. I know Kobe will say we should wrap up, but okay. Another thing I love about your products is that they're edible. Yeah. I have personally tasted Thank quite you. a number of them. I like <laughs> the hibiscus in <laughs> the hibiscus sugar scrub one. Yeah. It tastes very good. Yeah. So we see that on your Instagram. You also incorporate cooking videos yeah. with your products. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. That's very so interesting. So like um, when we're creating the products, like it's so it's okay to say that you can eat it, but you mm -hmm. have to also make people want to eat it, right? right. So I'm gonna give an example. Um, Constance, I beg you, can you please bring me a coconut exfoliating sauce and a spoon, wooden spoon. I'm gonna have her eat it on camera. It, I've eaten that one before. I don't think I have. You haven't? You, you know, eat it and I'm keep it, girl. ashamed to say this, but I almost ate your clay no, no, mask no, no, no. skin. Not almost. Huh? A clay mask with the turmeric. I have. I ate it. Yeah, and it's what very happened? nice. I'm telling you, it's like she like, likes spice. It smells so nice and it tastes so nice too. Oh yeah, can you open this for me, please? Thank you. So this is your spoon. I'm gonna yeah. use you keep to keep. It's yours. Thank you. I actually need one of these. <laughs> okay, and then so this is your. You're cooking an exfoliating salt. Mm -hmm. What I want you to do is mix it up a little bit okay. and then taste it. Mm -hmm, there you go. It's fresh. My gosh. So soft. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you're going to love it. Take more than that. Take, like, scoop. Go inside. Scoop it. Uh -huh. Don't be afraid. Why is it too girl? much? No, it's not too much. Go inside. Get the actual the stuff inside. Right, right. Let me uh -huh. go deeper then. You need to get the. It's uh -huh. so thick at the base. Yeah, the, uh -huh. that's the thing. You got to mix it because it's natural. Yeah. Right? Uh huh. There you go. Now, get some of that. Even stuff. the mixing into Trust nice. me, you're going to love it. Like, Trust me, here, let me give you a tray to put under so that you don't spill it. There you go. She still didn't even take that much. You're afraid. <laughs> try it, try it. You're gonna love it. Shame. 
Mm, nice. Oh. Shame. Mm. Oh, it's like, um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my dad used to say that all the time. <laughs> it tastes like Delicious. coconut biscuit. Uh-huh. It's so yummy. It's so yummy, yeah. It and is. with this particular one, we have kids in Japan that use this for pie. Mm. And then we have our coconut exfoliating salt. So there's some kid in Ghana. She refuses to eat pancakes if the stuff's not on it. Whoa. So when we say it's edible, you really it, have it a is. choice. Like, you can decide I want to eat it or I want to wear it. Either way is cool. Mm. And I think that's also giving the consumer choice. If you buy it, you decide. It's so safe. You decide how you want what to use you, it. You want to yeah. put it in your face, you want to put it in your hair, whatever. If you have found something you want to use it for, feel free because it's mm-hmm. not going to harm you. And I think that's also part of giving back to right. our consumers, giving them the freedom of it's skincare, yeah, but it could be anything else you want to see. Yeah, because you take one product and you can do about three things with it. You oh can God. cook, use it on your hair, use it on your, face, body. your body. Use That's it really as like amazing. coconut oil. Like coconut oil, you can use it for shaving. You can use it as mouthwash. You can use Whoa. it as body oil. You can use it as a lubricant. You can use it as so many anything things. you want to use it for. Makeup remover, we got you. You want to use it as soap? You can use it as soap. Some people, their skin is so sensitive in terms of using black soap that they right. do oil cleansing. Wow. So it's it's a plethora, Versatile, yeah. plethora of things you can Must do. It must feel really amazing to create something that's amazing. I mean, yes, it yeah. does. Because <laughs> I get to be use my products for free. <laughs> it's very rewarding. Yeah. And also to have it all around the world. I mean, that must be so beautiful to see. No, not yet. Not yet. I'm still... We need to do... Uh, you have some corners to cover. A but whole lot of cover. Like, we need to really tap into everywhere for them yeah. to know what's going on. Yeah. yeah. So, how many continents are you on now? Four. Wow. Yeah, four wow. Four. That's God amazing. <laughs> That's very amazing. Yeah. That's really good stuff. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, what would you say to people that want to get to four continents? How do they get there? Um, determination, mm-hmm. perseverance, and just don't give up. Right. Like, trust me, life, life will smack you upside down and leave you on the ground begging. But you get up every single time, yeah. every single day, no matter how hard it is, you get up. That's interesting. Thank you so much, Violet. So we have welcome. all your information awesome. in the description. Dope. If you want to get their products, definitely check out their Instagram page. Really great content. So thank, thank you. you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Hi. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you got value out of it. If you did, definitely leave a like and share with your friends and family that may find it interesting. If you're interested in more content like this, you definitely want to subscribe to this channel. We have more business stories coming up. You can also let me know in the comments below which businesses you'd like to see featured. Hopefully, I see you in my next video. Have a beautiful day, a beautiful week, and an amazing life. Bye!